Hello, it's Jennifer from Sea Lemon. One of my favorite things to do to unwind and get inspired is to drool over stationery. So that's what we're going to do today. Join me in this adventure to the mall where I seek out every stationery section I can find and get inspired by some journals that I could possibly DIY in the future and resisting my urge to buy all of the pens. Before we get going, I'm happy to say that today's video is sponsored by Audible. Audible has a bunch of different categories to choose from and they also make their own originals. These are exclusive audio titles created by a diverse group of celebrated storytellers. You guys know I'm all about being stress-free right now, so I think listening to your favorite audiobook is an easy and entertaining way to unwind. You can get your first audiobook for free plus two Audible originals when you try Audible for 30 days. Just go to audible.com slash lemon or text lemon to 500-500. My first stop, Papyrus. I think the store has a really great selection of journals and I always get inspired by their covers. And I noticed this style of exposed binding seems to be really popular throughout the manufactured journals, along with ombre or gradient pages. You could definitely do something similar to the style with my kettle stitch tutorial and painting over the edge. Maybe we can try something similar in a future DIY. They always have a unique variety of wrapping paper, which also makes great book covers. Along with quirky novelty stationery like chopstick pencils. Who doesn't love a good pun on a mug? Also a fun selection of pens and pencil accessories, which of course I was drawn to. These pens caught my eye and they also sell them individually but I ended up getting a pack of the neon colors and the black. I've never tried these pens before, but I do like that they are quick drying, smear resistant, vivid colors, archival safe, acid free, and non-toxic. They also come in a pretty durable case, which I believe you are supposed to fold back like this and display them. They come in a 0.3 millimeter pen tip size, so let's test these babies out. I'm going to test all of the pens I get out on this notebook, which I made a while ago. Let me know if you remember this in the comments below, and I'll also put that tutorial in the description. First impressions, these feel pretty fun to write with. And the neon colors are vibrant like a highlighter. Now the pack of black lip pens, they are all the same size and all the same color and pretty much feel the same as the neons. It's a nice coverage, and I would definitely doodle with any of these pens. Let's do a smudge test, and they are in fact quick drying. These pens are pretty thin, but my hand is on the smaller side, so I think that's why they feel nice to write with, and ghosting on the back of the paper is pretty minimal. I also got these pens because the kid in me wanted some fruity scented highlighters. It's cool that you can see the insides of the pen, but I will say that the retractable mechanism isn't very smooth. As for the fruitiness, they really weren't that strong smelling. You have to really get the pen up into your face to smell it. And same for when it's on the paper, you can't totally smell it unless you get it like all up in your face. There's minimal ghosting on the back of thinner paper, and there is a little bit of smearing on top of ink, but that could just depend on what pen you're writing with. However, they are not quick drying. These look fun, but they are kind of bulky to use, and I really wish that they smelled more fruity. Next, I made my way to a store that I haven't been into for years, Claire's. I used to go in here all the time when I was a kid in the early 90s, and since the early 90s are pretty much back, uh, it doesn't look like much has changed. There are stationary packs of unicorns, llamas, pretty much a cute version of any animal you can think of is in this store. And man, do they have a lot of journals and diaries with tactile stuff on the covers. And um, a donut chair for your phone. Yep, they got that. Among the bajillion scrunchies, colorful, and hollow accessories, I found journals scattered throughout the store. But yet again, I gravitated toward the pens, and I ended up getting a couple different unique ones to try. I do not have any squishies, but if it's on a pen, I kind of want to try it. So here is a super soft squishy pen, and it's Slow Rise, which apparently is a big deal in the squishy world. It seems like a pretty basic ballpoint pen. 
and you're definitely paying for the squishy part of it because riding with this honestly wasn't that comfortable. It kind of felt like a child's humongous crayon to write with. It has tactile scales because it's a mermaid tail and it's really colorful. It is kind of fun to squish, uh, but I think I would end up using it just as like a stress reliever instead of actually writing with it. I also got this silicone cactus pen, which I don't know what kind of tip this is, but it's a little bit different than a ballpoint. The ink was way more fluid on this one and a lot more fun to write with. There's a little bit of ghosting, but again, this paper is a little bit on the thin side. I think this pen would be perfect for a cactus lover and it's a rubbery feel, so it has a nice grip. The cactus one was my favorite, but I think these pens are more of a novelty and made to look cute on your desk. Now for a more mature version of stationery. Anthropology is one of those stores that I love walking into, but I rarely walk out with any purchases. I love seeing how they change their layouts with the seasons and their interior decor, their ever-changing creative window displays, getting a whiff of their signature candles throughout the store, checking out the sales section because it's more in my price range but I never find anything, and then just drooling over their stationery, which is what we're going to do today. They always seem to have a variety of unique journals with a handmade feel. Love the fancy patterned end pages, but when it comes to the inside paper, it's a little bit on the thin side, which I don't really prefer. I also love the handmade deckled edge feel on the pages, which I've been wanting to try in a future project. But again, the paper is on the thin side. They have simple saddle stitch journals that are on trend with the terrazzo pattern. And they usually have a selection of leather or vinyl stitched journals. This one has a magnetic closure and I love the pattern on the inside. I never really thought of painting the inside of vinyl, which could be fun. Here's that exposed binding style again. And after feeling the pages of almost all the books in the store, I did find one that had a thicker paper. But I didn't end up getting it because I feel like I could make something similar and I do already have a lot of sketchbooks to fill. Hallmark also has a variety of journals and stationery, including photo albums, which I don't see much of anymore. Also some Midori or Traveler style journals. It's almost like the adult version of Claire's. They still have all the animals, llamas, unicorns, all the animals, just a more mature version of them. I did see some unique pen holders and closures, which I find inspiring for future projects. I've painted on book edges, but I've never tried to write words. I found a doodle book, which I thought was really cool, love the colors. However, again, the paper was a little bit too thin for my liking, so I did not get this. And I did see a lot of quirky, motivational quote stationery. And of course, found my way again to the pen section, and I do need more color pencils. So I saw that they had a variety of them, and I thought to try these because the triangle aspect of them really sold me. I'm kind of a sucker for good packaging and I thought this box was cool and it it got me. There's 36 pencils total and it does look like you get a good range of color. So let's test these out. It's been a while since I've tried a different colored pencil because I've had the same ones for so long, but I'm running out of them so I tried these and they are a little bit more dry feeling. I don't know if that makes sense. And I did notice there were some colors that were so similar that it would just felt like there were duplicates of the same pencil. But there is a nice range of brown or skin tones, including a range of green. I'm testing the white pencil for you on my cover and you can see it doesn't really show up. I don't really have much luck finding a really opaque white pencil. I thought the triangular shape would feel better in my hand since it fits right into that little shape that your hand makes, but honestly I don't know if it feels better than a round pencil. I'll link the pencils that I usually use down in the description below, but I do like the matte finish of the triangular ones, 
versus this glossy finish, especially when your hand can get a little bit sweaty when you're drawing a lot. I think I need to color with these more to get to know them a bit better. Again, thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. You can get your first audiobook for free, plus two Audible originals when you try Audible for 30 days. Just go to audible.com slash lemon or text lemon to 500-500. I hope you found this enjoyable, and if you saw something you'd like to DIY in a future video, let me know in the comments below. And if there's another store that you want me to check out, also let me know in the comments. Hit that like button on this video so I know that you like stuff like this. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell right next to it so you can be the first to get notified for when I post new videos. Don't forget, if you want more behind the scenes kind of stuff and you want to support this channel, check out my Patreon. And you can also check out my YouTube memberships. Just hit that little join button. I'll put some related videos that you might like around here and those will be down below as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.